it's time. It's time for me to do another vlog style video where I talk about some of the projects and some of the things that are happening around me in my environment. So my big news, let's just get right to it. My big news is that I am in a new place. I am in a new studio, maybe you can call it. It's a place where I can do collage or I can be on my computer and work separate from my house. It is a studio in my backyard. And so it's awesome that I can just step away a few steps and I am here in a completely different environment. So I am busy taking things out of my spot where I used to be. Um, I showed everyone in my video about storage solutions. I showed you my workspace in my laundry room. So now I'm taking things out of my cupboards and places that I have things hidden away and I'm starting to bring things over into my new space. And as I do that, I'm thinking really hard about if there are things that I can get rid of, right? I don't wanna just pick up everything and move it over. I want to be careful about what I'm bringing in to the new space. In the video that I did about organizing your creative space, I talked about periodically going through your things uh, to determine if you're still interested, if you still have the interest in doing that particular kind of art, or if you've moved on and you wanna do other things now. Um, I had said that if it was maybe two or three years that you had not touched something, that it was likely that you're not gonna go back to it and it might be something you consider that you get rid of. I want to do the same thing for myself. I want to look at things and contemplate and think, do I want to hold on to this or am I gonna get rid of it? And I've already started to purge some blocks of material. I had a lot of quilting material um, and sewing items that I've decided, you know what, I'm not going back to this, so I'm just gonna get rid of it. So. I want to be very careful about when I'm moving things over to make sure that this is something that I care about and I like and I want to keep and I want to store, not just move it over for the sake of moving it over. So here is what my space looks like. This studio was built as a tiny house. It is a tiny house on wheels. A structure was built onto a trailer and it was shipped out to us once it was complete. One interesting feature about this space is that it has a reverse loft, meaning that the upstairs part can be used for having something like a desk or living space, like a couch or like a, almost like a living room. And the bottom part is for the sleeping area. It's big enough to put a queen size mattress, for example. You can imagine this is gonna be a really fun place when the kids wanna have sleepovers. On the other side, there is another loft. We're just using this as storage. There's a small bathroom with a shower. We don't have this hooked up to water and sewer, so at the moment, I'm using this space to store my lights and cameras and everything I need for recording. Because the space is long and narrow, I have to be thoughtful about the kinds of furniture that I choose to bring into this space. So far, I have one awesome purchase right here. This is my desk that is a workbench on wheels, essentially. I found inspiration for this on Instagram. I was scrolling and I saw another artist who had this desk 
And what's really neat about it is that you can um, lift it or lower the desk with this crank over here and it also is on wheels which means I can push it around I can move cameras around if I want to take pictures or videos at different angles at different times of the day if I need to move it for lighting purposes so it's really convenient to have it on wheels and it's just the right size it has two big drawers which are very useful to have for storing long papers or bigger papers and it's just really well made. The other piece of furniture I have downstairs is my standing desk. This is just a small IKEA standing desk that I've had for a couple of years and really like it. It's, it's convenient to use when I have a small project that I want to just be working on in the side. I have this large gap right here next to the stairs and I would like to bring in a cupboard of some sort, something like a china hutch. And I have one in my house already. I was thinking about bringing it over, but it is perhaps not the, the right color. So I don't know if I have to repaint it or what I want to do. So, but anyway, that's the type of piece I am looking to find or looking to get. These stairs here on the left, they have drawers that you can open and they are quite deep. So I can store all kinds of papers in here, which is very conveniently located right behind the area where I sit. Upstairs, I have another desk. This is where I used to record some of my videos. I think I'll keep it up here and break my computer and perhaps uh, a monitor and set it up up top. I have a small couch. I found this at Goodwill and um, it's, it's a very tiny couch. <laughs> a tiny couch for a tiny house. So I thought that it would be a good fit. I still want to add some curtains. I want to decorate a little bit more. I would like maybe some fairy lights, perhaps a small, a small bookshelf against a wall over by the front door. Just little details that will make this place feel like my own. So I'm taking this process really slow I want to take my time bringing things in and thinking about the pieces of furniture and items that are going to be around me in this environment. I want to be picky and thoughtful because it's going to stay this way for a long time. So I want to have things that reflect me and things that make the environment cozy. So I've been pulling things out of my cupboards in my laundry room and bringing them over here. Some of the things I have, I have to really think about if I want to keep them, if I like this type of art or if I want to move on to other things. This, for example, I made this little box and I covered it with postage stamps from India. Um, it's really pretty, but I don't have a use for it and I don't know if I want to continue to hold on to things like this or not. I also have a huge stack of these types of journals that I have created using mail that I've received. These journals are a lot of fun to create and work on. I have letters and mail that I save. I don't get rid of the envelopes. So it's been really neat just to add and embellish with my own stamps and stickers and things to kind of, you know, fit things in pockets with other postcards and so on. So I'll probably continue making this kind of art in the future.
I also found this travel journal, which was something that I worked on many years ago. It's really neat to kind of pull out old projects and see how I could possibly add to them or, you know, keep them as is. I also like to, of course, remember the types of projects that I worked on. This one I made from the time that I spent in Vienna. So this is just a fun little a journal or fun little book that I made using all different kinds of uh, materials, stamps, and as well as collaging and a little bit of writing. I also have a lot of space in here if I want to do more or do more collage. So that's an option uh, to consider. The collage project that I did work on recently was creating a postcard that I mailed to myself. I was asked to participate in this collaboration and I really wanted to because when the prompt was postcard, I mean, how could I not, right? Postcards are my absolute favorite format for collaging. So I wanted to share this. This is a project that I worked on many years ago. This box, I should say, is a project that I worked on many years ago. It's kind of like a treasure box, and it has these handles on the side. One handle here, and the other handle is over here, which happens to have kind of an extra secret drawer. There's another little drawer down here. Have some treasures in here. But in the top, I use it to store all of my postcards. Postcards that I have either received from friends or received through art exchanges, through my community of Collage Art Collective, or postcards that I have created and mailed to myself. I will just quickly flip through some of these just so that you can get an idea of um, the different kinds of cards that I have here. These ones are from the last art exchange. I love this one with the big apple. So many great cards, so much great art. All right, so that's one of the reasons why I love postcard art so much. You can fit so much onto that size, four inches by six inches. And then I love collecting them and having them in one place where I can enjoy them. So while I'm moving in, if you have some ideas for furniture or other items that I can use around my space, please let me know in the comments. I would love to know your ideas for making this place seem cozy and um, what kinds of things have worked for you if you're in a tight space and you have some piece of furniture or some item that helps you in your creativeness. Once I get my curtains hung and a couple more pieces of furniture in here, I will show you again what it's looking like as well as I'll show you what it looks like outside so that you can see how it is coming along. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you the next time.